My superpower is illumination. I specialize in creative perception and insight. The first time I knew I had this gift, if you will, is when I was working for California School for the Blind and I took a group of visually impaired students ice skating. Yeah, I did. And I was tying one of the shoes of one of my students and she kicked her foot up and the skate went through my lip. And I was <laughs> hurting, but I also knew I didn't want to alarm the kids because at that point I understood the power of tone, cadence, right, in my voice. And so they were saying, Bernice, Miss Bernice, what happened? And I said, nothing happened. Sarah hit my lip and now there's glitter everywhere. <laughs> they burst into laughter and, you know, at that point, that's when I knew um, there's a big difference between sight and perspective. And many people have sight, right? Most of us are visually um, capable, but we lack perception. We lack perspective, right? And some of us have perspective, but we lack vision. And that's what I help leaders do have more perspective and better vision. And there I was laying on my kitchen floor, face pressed firmly against the vinyl flooring, right? It was cold. And I even lifted my shirt up so I could feel the cold on my stomach because that was the only place that I had refuge from a sickness that no one could identify. And so I tell this story because it was right there on the floor, right there on the ground where I began to find my faith. It was a global pandemic, March, 2020. And going into the hospital in March of 2020 and you did not have COVID, no one wanted to see you. And so I was dealing with a sickness that no one could identify and it was tough. That was one of the toughest challenges um, of recent time. And I lost uh, faith, I lost hope. Um, and I didn't realize it for a while, but I found it again on the floor. And um, finding faith on the floor for me meant having gratitude at the ground level. It was there where I had to challenge myself and say, okay, what am I still grateful for? I know I'm sick all day. I know I can't find any help, but what am I still grateful for? And this was a pivotal point in my career. This is when I decided that, you know what, I am gonna pursue some of the things I thought I'd never pursue. I'm gonna chase my dreams because guess what? I may never get that chance again. <laughs> One of the biggest lessons I've learned on this journey is that Vernice has to get better at forgiving people who are not sorry. Not just the people who apologize, not just the people who want reconciliation, but the people who are not sorry, the people who, um, are okay with their decision. And I had to grapple with that after being turned down for a promotion at work. And um, I noticed that the resentment was building up inside of me. And then someone said, Bernice, do you know what resentment really is? And I said, what? And they said, it's like setting yourself on fire and hoping the other person burns of smoke inhalation. And I was like, yeah. And I was like, wait, that's me wait, I'm the one burning. And um, how I knew I was sitting in resentment is because I started to show up for work late. And not just regular late, but late, late, right? Like I'm going to stop at Starbucks knowing that I'm already late. 
And I pull up, because now Starbucks is my dealer, right? Because I'm mad, right? I'm angry. So I, I pull up to Starbucks, car idling, and I even have the nerve to check in, text a few people and say, hey, do you want anything? Because I had lost the importance of just having personal integrity because of my resentment. And so a huge lesson is forgiving people who are not sorry so that you don't hold on to the things that can set you free. Not just to be free in that job, but to be free in life, right? It gave me the freedom to pursue my own dreams and aspirations that had nothing to do with that workplace. But it wasn't until I realized that I had to um, make that huge, huge decision to forgive people who are not sorry. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown. I just want to speak to you, the speaker, or maybe not even a speaker, right? Maybe you're not a speaker, but you have a message inside of you that you want to release, or maybe you have a story, right? A story of your life, a story in your career, or, or maybe, maybe as you're listening right now, you're an expert, right? You're, you're, you're an expert at teaching people how to do something. You're expert at raising kids. And I want you to imagine for a moment that you had an opportunity to share your message or your story on a bigger stage. And I'm gonna talk about that in a moment and what that would mean for you if you could reach your target audience, if you're an entrepreneur, if that target audience got associated to the problem that you solve, or if you're a super entrepreneur with sales funnels out there, not only did it get associated to who you were, but they were able to join your list. Now for other folks, that won't make no sense at all. But for you, the entrepreneur, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I wanna invite you over to something called the Comeback Champion Summit. And, and the whole purpose of the Comeback Champion Summit is really to do one thing, which is one word, and that is possibilities. That's right, when, when you get a chance to get on stage, uh, you get a chance to do it virtually, and some of you maybe in person, and you get a chance to share your story. So something deep, deep inside of you, I always say your message, because some of you have a message or your expertise, then guess what happens? Three things happen. Number one, you get to make a difference. And isn't that why you are on this earth? I mean, I don't want to get emotional here, but you're really on this earth to make a difference for someone else. Something has happened to you so it can go through you to someone else. And being able to speak on a, on a, on a platform that provides an audience, it's like, a, like having a microphone that allows you to help more people faster. So that's, that's number one. Uh, number two, when you're on a, a platform, I'm gonna invite you to the Comeback Champion Summit, you get a chance to have more meaning in the world, to have more impact and to have more influence. And that's really who we're looking for. We're looking for folks out there who have an interest, want or desire of serving others. So if that's you, that's you, I'm gonna invite you to go over to www.comebackchampionsummit.com. Again, comebackchampionsummit.com. Click the button, it'll say, apply to speak. Go through the process. And if it's a good fit, can't wait to share your story over at the Comeback Champion Summit or any one of our platforms that serves other folks. With that being said, um, my name, by the way, is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again real soon. See you out. Oh, what would I tell my 21-year-old self? What would I tell 21-year-old Bernice? Um, the first thing I think I would tell her is failure is not the end of the world. That would be the first thing. But I think more importantly, what I would do is I would tell her that, what I would tell my 21 year old self is return the shopping cart to its rightful place. That's what I would tell my 21 year old self. Have you ever tilted the front wheels of a shopping cart and just pushed it up against the curb and left it there? Yeah, well, I've had the uh, experience of chasing one of those things down. And the reason I would tell my 21-year-old self to put the shopping cart back is so that, one, just to understand that um, integrity is going to be very important. That doing 
what you need to do when no one's watching is going to be very important. Also, shortcuts are costly. And so this is just a reminder every time, right? Young Bernice, when you go to the grocery store, not to take shortcuts. And um, also, I think the importance of returning the shopping cart is because it's in little disciplines that you find your best self and your higher self. And you'll need discipline in the long run. Um, discipline will take you much further than motivation. And so, yeah, that's what I tell my younger self. Return those shopping carts. <laughs>
is hard. It's hard work. And I'm willing to have those difficult conversations. And that's why people hire me. What I've enjoyed most about working with media expertise and the whole crew here at Making of Entrepreneur is the hospitality. Um, I felt at home since I walked in the doors. Um, it's such a professional environment. I feel like a movie star. Maybe that's next. Um, I just love the people. It's been an amazing experience and I would recommend anyone, anyone, especially people who are in this entrepreneur journey to join media expertise and the Making of Entrepreneur Project. <laughs>